Since we invented the wheel, we became really crazy about circles. I mean, we use them everywhere, like here, and here, and here we have these circles within a circle, 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 within a circle. Each of these have half circles on the side, because they need to fit in these other circles from here, 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 here. Also, this thing is full of them. We use circles so much because they have important properties that are ideal for all kinds of things. You can really say that circles make our world go round. And because they're so special, today's video will be all about the circle equation. We'll study this equation by drawing points in 3D space. I haven't seen people do this demonstration before. They usually explain it using the Pythagorean theorem. But I think what I'm about to teach you will make some things clearer and hopefully more interesting as well. Let's see. Today I'm using CodePen, and I've made an interactive playground so you can follow along if you want. No need to make an account or anything like that. The default view is this, but you can change the layout like this and will only work in JavaScript today, so my camera covers the other two fields. We'll start off by drawing a point. So I'll write here, draw point at some coordinates like two, zero, and four, for example. And now on the right, we will get this dot right here. And this dot is centered at two on the x-axis, four on the z-axis, and zero on this y-axis. The axes are red, green, blue, x, y, z, if that makes sense. Now, this point right here is actually redrawn on every frame, like the function here says. And there are like 60 frames per second, so we actually see here a lot of points on top of each other. I can show you what I mean by making the x value be a random value instead. And let's pass here x. And now when I refresh, we see a lot of different points with random x coordinates, but all the others are the same. So all of them are four on the z axis and zero on this y axis right here. Let's take out these variables here. So y is equal to zero for now and z Let's make z also a random value just to get the better idea of what's going on. So I'm going to put here x, y, z in the draw point function call. And now you see points scattered all over this plane, actually. They're not all over the space because y is zero there. If I would put y to random, then they would cover the whole space right here. But I'll let you play with that. Instead, I want to make z the value of a function that depends on x. So let's write here f of x is equal to x for now. And z is going to be the value of this f of x. When we will plot these right now, you're going to see the function f of x is equal to x. So you're probably familiar with this already. It's just a line going through the origin. And for every x value, the value of the function plotted here on the z axis is the same. So all of these are equal. And that's the first part of this circle equation. So I'm going to split it, break it down, take it step by step, and see how this circle magically appears at the end. Now, the next part is this right here. So we subtract something from x, a constant value. Let's say this value is going to be 2, for example. What will happen is our new function is going to be shifted downwards so that it crosses this z-axis right here at minus 2. This is typically called the y-intercept, but now I'm plotting this on the z-axis here, so uh, I guess it's the z-intercept or whatever. So what this 
part of the equation here does is it translates up and down this f of x function. If we put here minus 3 instead, then this is going to look like this, passing through this minus 3 value right here. But what happens if we square this? So let's try to take this value, f of x equals x minus 3 to the power of 2. We now get this other shape called a parabola. Let me focus on this xz axis and see it forming here. So it touches now this point 3 right here on the x-axis. Somehow the up and down translation I mentioned previously is now changing into a left to right translation. And that's actually because of how the function is now reflected uh, on the positive side of this z-axis right here. So if I'm going to go a step back here and actually print the absolute value of this x minus 3 function we had earlier, so without the square root, you can see that what happens is that this part that normally would have went down here is reflected upwards because we are turning the negative into a positive. And squaring has the same effect because when you square a value, uh, if it's negative, it also becomes a positive. So now we can think about this first term here, this constant, as a translation horizontally instead of vertically like we had previously. Now let's do the same for y. Let's give it a random value. And here the f of x function is actually going to turn into a function of x and y this time, two variables. So let me rename this like so. And let's add the y part to be, for example, y minus 1 to the second power. You can try playing with different values here. Maybe remove the squaring, maybe remove these constants and see what you get. But what I will do is go closer towards this circle equation right now. And we see something forming right here. And it's not a flat shape anymore. It's actually 3D this time. And that's why I made this application in 3D right here. Now, this shape is called a paraboloid. Kind of like a parabola, but uh, in 3D. And it actually touches this xy plane here at 3 on the x-axis and 1 on the y-axis. So this point right here where it touches this xy plane is going to be defined by these two values. If I replace here this 1 with uh, 3, for example, we will get a paraboloid that touches the xy plane at 3 and 3 this time. So it shifted a little bit. Now we're almost there. To get the circle, we have to consider this part right here and turn this into an equation. So what this means is that from all these possible points, all these points that we are generating here, we only keep the ones that the function is equal to that value there. So you can think about this as a plane, a plane parallel to the xy plane, but going along the z-axis so that it crosses it at this value from here. Now, let's say we want to focus on the points where the function is equal to 4. So if f of xy is equal to 4, I'm going to draw the point using this function, but I'm going to make that point black instead of the default gray. Otherwise, I will just continue to draw the points like this. Now, the problem is this won't really emphasize anything because the probability to get the function here exactly equal to four is pretty much zero. 
To visualize something, I'm going to write here less or equal to 4 instead. And now you're going to get this kind of result right here, where these black dots appear below the value of 4 on the z-axis. So if I'm going to focus now on this xz axis, you will see that all the points below this are going to be black and the other ones above are less emphasized. So the circle can be actually seen now if we focus on this xy plane. It's right here and it's not actually a circle. The proper term for it is a disk because it's a filled circle, so to speak. The center of this circle is right here at 3 and 3 on the x and y axes. And the radius of this circle is 2. It's actually the square root of this value right here. Now, if we're going to change this so that we emphasize values that are, for example, greater than 3.9 and less than 4.1, basically using a very flattened cuboid instead of a plane, we will start to see a kind of a circle forming here. It's not actually a circle, it's called a ring, because it does have a kind of width, and the circle has no width. But because we can't draw infinitely many points in this simulation, we'll never be able to draw a true circle. And come to think about it, points have no thickness, so we wouldn't even see it either. But I'm not going to bother with things like that. Let me know in the comments if you like this demonstration, and if you want to see more like this in the future. See you guys.